What up, loved ones? What it do? It's Paddy Young right here. You know where I'm from, but yeah, today, right now, I'm gonna be talking about my experience, my prison term, all the shit I've been through, all the prison I've been through, and so far, I've already talked about uh, Oklahoma, out of state, and you know, that was a level three. It was lovely over there, but unfortunately, it was my time. I had to go, so. My points came came back up again and they got me all the way they sent me all the way to fucking high desert state prison over there in Susanville, California. And this is a level four yard 180 design. Whole different world, whole different environment, back to California, back to reality. It's a 180 design also. It's just like Pelican Bay and Kern Valley. It's a 180 design level four. It's serious right here. It's a no hands policy right here. All your fights, all your mission, whatever it has to, you have to use a knife because it's a no hands policy. You know what I mean? You're trying to fight like in the yard, like with no fucking weapon or anything like that. They're just like laugh at you and they're like, "What the hell was that?" You know what I mean? But I mean, it happens. Some things are spontaneous. That's not planned and shit. But for the most part, this place is a serious place, a sad place. 180 in the 180s and the level fours, like like I said last time it's like 99.9 percent .9%. almost everybody got fucking life over there so you know they're just trying to do their time they're just trying to relax no they ain't trying to go to the hole everybody trying to go to a level three everybody trying to go to a better place because high desert they got them on the cuts it's like hella far from everywhere else and shit so fucking far and you can check it out susanville california and google to those who don't know or, or heard about high desert yeah back to reality right so you know coming from a place from a level three where everybody got dates everybody was enjoying life everybody got their smile on their face i mean most most people you know what i mean because you know it's lovely over there but right now right here in high desert i'm talking about high desert it's like it's quiet, it's serious, man. You 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 only see often, you know. You don't see that much people smiling. Everybody's serious. But that's how it is over there, you know. There's really not much to smile about, and it's hella dry too. They they ain't really got that much dope. So all the dope fiends, all the people that, you know, want to do that, they can't really do that over there that much, cause you know it's dry over there. It's on the cuts, hella far, man. As a matter of fact. I got visits over there, but I got visits from some of the hungers that were still showing love and shit. And one of the hungers, she, she's coming from the Bay Area. She used to visit over there, but I believe it's like a 14-hour drive straight from the Bay Area all the way to High Desert. Because you have to go through like a mountain or something like that, and there's like a lot of snow. And then uh, it depends what month, but from, from, from my experience during that time, there was snow. And then... At one point she was visiting and then they had to fucking they had to stop her like during uh, on, on the mountain and they had to they made they, the police they made her buy a freaking chain for her tires so that she can continue on because it's kind of dangerous and she did it even though she didn't have that much money you know what I mean she did it she bought the chain because she was already halfway there so and then you're gonna get your visit the school is school and everything because you you get to like somebody you know from the streets from the outside world visiting you showing you love whatever and then we get there chopping it up about life and then she you know looking out we're buying food from the vending machine and stuff like that chilling chilling you know what i mean and you know if she could she'll probably visit more often because you know but it's expensive so i believe she only visited like twice because it's hella far you know i don't blame her and shit but you know whoever's gonna show love during those times when you're down that's the one that you know you're gonna appreciate you can't just like take that for granted and shit you know what i mean but yeah high desert that place i'm like so i'm sober status again no partying no freaking drink i mean they got drink they got drink but rarely you know what i mean people making prunos and shit and you know most of the most of the most the mo uh most of the time people they like they what they do they smoke chew they smoke chew tobacco and shit those are the ones that the police those country fucking police over there they chew their little tobacco and shit and they spit it on the ground in the yard 
and yard crew workers or people that like when we go to the yard you see like the dolphins or the people that feeding for nicotine whatever they're looking for the chew tobacco for them that's gold because you know they pick it up they knew they know where it came from it came from the dirty ass mouth of somebody else's mouth and they pick it up and then they bring it back to the sale and uh they dry it up just dry it up because you know it's kind of wet and then after you dry it up you roll it up in uh, rolling paper or something you know usually they use the little bible which is like that's you know they really really don't got that much rolling papers over there so and then that's where they smoke you know that's that's, that's how they smoke how do they get fire how do they get lighters there's a lot of ways batteries the electric socket you just pop it you know what i mean so we get fire we get we smoke they smoke over there i wasn't from the, trying to do all that i'd just rather just stay sober and just like discipline mode again you know what i mean because apparently I, I couldn't stay i couldn't stay in the level three in the freaking party place you know what i mean so yeah that's what they were doing but i'm like i'm cool with that though and that's the most pretty much is dry is boring over there the police police a lot of the police right there they from the um, gang and shit. They had they got their own gang. It's called the Green Wall. You know they made up their own gang and it's all you know some 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 white boy he he wrote about it. They got a book about it. You guys can search it up or Google it. It's called the Green Wall and shit. He pretty he's pretty much a whistleblower. It's like telling the whole world like all the crookedness and the corruptness of what the police are doing and that you know that's their gang. It's called the Green Wall. They also have the Code of Silence which is you can't snitch on each other and shit so how does that work you get to fucking be a police and be a fucking stupid gang member and shit and then us we got a code about fucking the code of silence and we can't do that we gotta abide by the authority and shit it's, you know it's all different topic i'll be talking about that but i'm talking about high desert right now right so yeah they got a lot of those over there in in, in high desert man so you know if they're trying to fuck with you you can't do nothing like you know if we if you go to the chow hall and then we'll be in a line going to chow hall and shit walking walking and a lot of them a lot of the police they're just standing right there like this just trying to fucking randomly search people and shit or trying to get a reaction from you know what i mean like sometimes they happen to just choose you you know sometimes it's not personal sometimes it is but it probably depends on your face or something how you look like or whatever and then they'll look at and then they'll just you know they'll call you if they, they choose you they feel like you have something you have carrying a contraband a weapon or something and shit and then they'll fuck with you they'll pat you down trying to see what's up you got any fucking weapons and then you just gotta abide by it just like you can't do nothing about it that's prison man you ain't you ain't trying to get searched don't go to fucking high desert don't go to fucking level four yard man don't go to prison period homie you know, I mean, if that's your thing, though, you know, but since you're here, motherfuckers is trying to survive and shit, you know, just get out the way, you know, but yeah, they're going to search you, they're going to pat you down, then, you know, but pretty much they know the business, though, they, there's like a line that you, they, they shouldn't cross, and if there is, then shit happens, you know, but it's boring over there, it's freaking boring over there in high desert, it's like, it's serious, everybody's serious, you're, you know, that's how it is. And one time, uh, I got this party. Let's see. There's a there, there's a party. I was held up with this party. He's like already like 40 something years old, like 42, 45, 40. Yeah, he's kind of old already compared to me at that time. I was like in my 20s and shit. So, but I know about respect, man. I came from the 180. I came from Pelican Bay, Kern Valley. I respect all people. Eh? None of that stupid little kid shit. You know what I mean? That street mentality. That's not That's not how it works over there. You're not going to survive with that street mentality. Because you can't take up on all your enemies, man. You're going to go to the hole. Nobody's bigger than the car. Nobody. Nobody's bigger than the car. You can try. But, you know. Yeah, anyway. So, yeah. I'm talking about the party, right? My Sally. It was my Sally over there. It's Pinoy, man, so that's my blood, that's my people, you know, it's no secret, I love my people. And we're just chilling, chilling, but he probably did too much dope, like he's not all there anymore and shit. So, you know, I mean, I understand, because my, my my level of understanding is like way, 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 way up there and shit. So I'm just, you know, minding my own business going through it. And one time, one time, I guess he didn't have no tobacco or whatever. Um... 
for some reason he just he felt like he could just be yelling yelling at me and fucking you know because because you know on the asian culture the filipino culture we, we respect all people that's how it is man i do i know i do that's how my parents taught me and shit so you know so calmly calmly i told i, I told i told the party like hey man um uh, what's your voice huh you know you're kind of yelling and shit for you watch your tone buddy you know what i mean i know i'm hella nice and everything but like just watch your tone dog i'm not yelling at you fool you know what i mean and then um uh this guy he took it the wrong way he probably felt disrespected to the point where then that that fool said like what you're challenging me you're challenging me and at that point he was just getting louder and louder and pretty much to the point where i had no choice so you know i grabbed my my chapstick and i got him one time right right with the right hand got him one time and it's like in the middle of his freaking face and shit gave him that little black eye on both sides dropped him and you know that, that's not I, I mean you know what i mean i had no choice so he dropped to the floor and then i told the party like man just get up man you know what i mean I, i'm not the type because that's my people so I'm, not to, I'm not i'm not gonna beat you up while you're down on the floor and shit you know so i told him get up socked him again dropped him again and then at this point i didn't want to fight him no more because you know i kind of feel bad so he just started trying to wrestle trying to wrestle me and shit like man watch out dog and at this point they were releasing yard so <clears throat> before they released the yard one of the police was doing count time real quick he saw us fucking wrestling in the cell like hey man watch out and then they 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 got us out the cell then they fucking looked at looked at our hands you know the usual and so then ah nothing happened whatever and shit and it's like oh okay well you know just separate these two and stuff like that so long story short i ended up with uh with another fucking um older guy chinese guy but this was hella nice though he's just a he's just a regular chinese old guy just doing his time too he got life killed stabbed the shit out of somebody whatever and at that point i was just doing my thug fizzle in the main kitchen i got myself into the main kitchen eating enjoying having fun over there in the main kitchen that's where you get the most food at you know what i mean uh, but yeah i heard i heard there's i heard freaking um the old like kind of crazy about it he had a he had a new youngster sally too he's a puerto rican dude and I heard fucking the Puerto Rican just beat up on the on the party on the Pinoy. So everybody heard about it. Everybody, everybody heard about it. So I'm trying to investigate what happened because I need to find out did did that fool fucking took advantage of fucking the older Pinoy party. And this fool is not the little Pinoy. This fool is big. You know what I mean? Just he just he's not all there and shit. So I want to know because that's my people's man. I love my people's and plus. You can't be putting hands on, on on a different race and shit unless you know whatever and shit but there's no secret that guy's kind of like a J cat so i went to go investigate on the yard i spoke to the fucking uh to the to the i saw them both at the yard I saw them both at the yard and i spoke to the puerto rican dude the, the youngster dude and i had a chapstick in my hand just in case i'll fire any quick trying to say something crazy but he said hey man I didn't have no choice. That fool was disrespecting me, yelling at me, talking shit to me, fuck my mama, whatever. I was like, yeah, but what? Why did you? Why did you beat him up when, when you know, when he was already down? Why did you still fire on his ass and shit? I mean, you know what I mean? So I went to go. I went to go. I, I went to go investigate and talk to the party. The party said, um, uh, it is what it is. He don't want to make a big, bigger issue. You know, she just got out of hand and shit. I just don't agree with. I just don't agree with fucking um, uh, somebody already in the floor. But you know, actually anything goes. You in the cell, you can kill anybody over there. If you want to, just kill them. That's how it usually works, you know. But if you if if, if you don't got a life, you got a date. Then you might want to think about it so you can still go home, like me. You know what I mean? But it is in the cell. Anything goes, man. If he kills you, then he got you. He got your life. Then you kill him, and you got his life. That's just how it is. But long story short. The party didn't want to push the issue. Puerto Rican guy pretty much didn't have no choice because there was no secret. The party is kind of Jake at. And I just let him go. I was like, man, whatever, dog. But at first, at first, I thought that he was like, you know, 
just want to beat up on the fucking on, on the on the, on the, on the homie, man. But it wasn't even like that. After investigation, I talked to I talked to the party Alex Mendoza. He's the one that had the yard for the for the homies and shit. He's been there for the longest, whatever. I mean, that's that that's what that's what that's what it was. That's what was going on over there. But pretty much everybody just mind their own business, just doing their time, trying to stay out the way. You know, that's what I was doing. And oh, one time, uh, <laughs> when I, you know, this is this is one of the reasons also why. I believe in God and miracles or in your case or whatever you believe the universe or whatnot there's a lot of circumstances where <coughs> they, they take you away from from um, troubles and stuff like that you know things that you could have you could have been you could have been dead you could have gotten live you could some a lot of bad shit could have happened and you don't notice this because you don't really pay attention but there's a lot of miracles going on every day if you're just you're spiritual you know those are the, those are, to those who can relate, you know, and one time, like I said earlier, I was the main kitchen worker and shit. And uh, usually, before they open the door, before they release you to go to work, they crack your door, your door first, like a warning, like a heads up, like get ready, fool. Because they don't want to be just be opening doors and then you ain't even ready and shit. So they crack your door, your door first, and I put my boots on. They already cracked my door at this time. I already put my boots on. My, you know, I'm getting ready to go to work, about to eat. You got a lot of good food over there, main kitchen. Cause I'm trying to save some money. I'm not trying to like, you know, excuse me, ask my folks for a lot of food. Cause you know, I, I, I can survive over there. But anyways, yeah, they crack the door. I'm waiting, waiting to go to main kitchen. Next thing you know, he kicked off over there. <clears throat> get down, get down. You just hear the alarm. Get down. It's kicking off for a while. It's kicking off for a while. My door is cracked. And... You know, long story short, it kicked off with the homies, the Asian Islanders, and the fucking blacks. It was a spontaneous fucking riot. Perhaps, perhaps somebody just disrespected somebody, no choice had to fire on that nigga, whatever and shit. And what happened was, uh, there was like 200, 300, a lot of blacks, way more, you know, than, than, the, than the Asian Islanders, the others, or whatever, because... Like the Puerto Ricans or the other fools there in the car also, some homies, they, they accept them and shit because we're uh, outnumbered by everybody. But some of the OGs, they don't though. They like look at them like they're different and shit. They're not our, they're not, they're not our peoples. But it is what it is. That's how it is in prison, in California prison. So, yeah, it kicked up over there and then come to find out there was, there was a lot of fucking blacks and for, let's just say estimate like 300, 200, 300. And then there was only like 40, 40 something during that time because they don't release all the art at the same time. They only release like two or three buildings at the same time. And it kicked off spontaneously. And all the homies was everywhere. Homies from the handball court all the way over there, from the basketball court. People from the handball court left the handball court and the homies, they went to the basketball court and it kicked off over there, kicked off over there. And people that were involved pretty much was like all the homies, 100% because you know because of our unity our unity is strong you can ask around because of our background our culture family oriented whatever and then the blacks there's so many of them and they didn't all jump in they didn't help each other there was they, they left their, their home is hanging man they they people just watched they didn't try to they're not trying to catch another 90 days they're not trying to go to the hole for whatever and you know and that's what happened so what happened was they were in they were in the hole and from what i heard a lot of the blacks they weren't even mad at the homies man they respect that shit actually they were mad at their own peoples they were like oh man those motherfuckers talk a good one they didn't even jump in fuck them niggas with the woo 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 when i get out of here i'm gonna handle business that's how that's how they were feeling the the real ones the solid ones because a lot of those fools they didn't jump in man so you know what i mean there wasn't it, there's so there's so many of them they have a lot of division they're like <clears throat> they're not as u united you know they're just not they're not as united but so long story short i got away from that riot and um they, we got on lockdown they solved they solved it it wasn't a big issue it wasn't personal whatever they didn't want to continue it no more everything was good we came out of lockdown program again program again 
And I was just like minding my own business, taking care of business until the point where I made it back. After like a year, my points came down again and I made it back to a level three. So here you go. I'm going, I'm going to a level three again. And my, I believe my next story is going to be Ironwood straight State Prison, Ironwood level three. And I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm ready to go. And that's going to, that's going to, that's what I'm going to be talking about next. So stay tuned, you know, to those who haven't yet uh, subscribed, just go ahead and subscribe real quick. I appreciate it. If you want me to subscribe on yours, just let me know, you know, make a comment, anything, whatever and shit, you know, I'm going to respond back as soon as I can. So anyways, say what you mean and mean what you say because real recognize real. I'm out of here, man. Good looking out.